back everyone um this is the third day of the workshop and uh, we're gonna have again two talks in a row uh, uninterrupted and after that we're gonna have 30 minutes of discussion uh, for both speakers so the first speaker is uh, masaki Oshikawa from university of Tokyo. please go ahead Okay, uh, thank you. Um, so first, I'd like to thank the organizers for setting up this nice meeting. Although, of course, I miss the actual physical visit, but uh, yeah, talking over Zoom is also uh, useful and stimulating. So today I'd like to talk about uh, resolving uh, Brzezinski coastal Southwest transition. Uh, which sounds like a uh, very old topic, and indeed it is. So most of you guys are talking about uh, fractons or uh, uh, SPT or whatever uh, recent topic, but uh, this uh, BKT transition is um, a very old subject, but uh, actually the root of those uh, topological physics, you know, the first historical example of uh, topological phase transition. So I want to go back to this problem with uh, modern, uh, uh, you know, uh, modern concepts and modern tools. So actually, I decided to talk about uh, this subject because it just happened that uh, uh, this paper appeared in archive uh, this morning. And actually, the main driver of this work is a student in my group, uh, Atsushi Weda. Actually, th this is his first first ever paper, I think. But uh, I'm pretty uh, excited about this result. So I, hopefully, I can share my excitement. So if you are interested in details, uh, you can check up this paper in in archive. So um, as I said, uh, probably you guys remember that the Nobel Prize in Physics in 2016, five years ago, uh, came to our field, basically, uh, topological phase transitions and topological phases of matter. And uh, what are topological phase transitions? There are many examples known by now, but um, but the uh, uh, first ever historical example of topological phase transition is uh, Berzinski coastal southwest transition, as you know. And uh, indeed, uh, at least part of this Nobel Prize in 2016 uh, was awarded to the discovery of this BKT transition. And uh, I don't think I need any explanation about the BKT transition itself to this audience, but uh, the canonical model showing this PKT transition is just a 2D classical XI model, a spin model with a, a rotor degree of, planar rotor degree of freedom. And the Hamiltonian is given like this. So each side has angular variable theta and the neighboring sides are coupled with is cosine theta minus theta j. So this is very simple um, spin model and classical spin model. So there is no uh, negative sign problem or anything. So it is actually relatively easy to simulate by Monte Carlo. But still the study of BGT transition is not so uh, easy. So I'd like to show you a relatively recent example. So this is a paper from 2012, uh, nine years ago, but I think uh, this was a state of the art Monte Carlo simulation at least at that time. And uh, they tried to, well, they did several things, but uh, they tried to determine the critical temperature of standard 2D classical XI model. But of course, uh, in numerics, you can only deal with a uh, finite size system, at least in Monte Carlo. So you estimate a uh, critical temperature, critical points at finite size, system size, and then uh, need to extra extrapolate to infinite system size. So this is the uh, estimate of TC in the summer activity. So you need a finite size scaling. So this is not surprising, but what I want to emphasize is that uh, this horizontal axis is L to power of minus two, but this small L is not the system size as you might have expected. 
So this uh, horizontal axis is uh, one over L square, small L square. And actually small L is a uh, log of the actual system size. So the leftmost point, this corresponds to the largest system size. And uh, in this paper, the largest system size is, uh, 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 you know, uh, 65,000 uh, linear size. So the total number of spin is 65,000 times 65,000. So it's a huge system, even though it's a simple classical spin system. So they uh, used a kind of supercomputer. At that time, maybe fourth fastest in the world um, in, back in 2012. And uh, they used uh, 250 six GPUs at the same time or something like that to perform this calculation. So uh, actually uh, you need to study very large system size if you try to simulate this um, PKT transition in uh, most uh, straightforward manner. And um, probably you have seen this uh, picture many, many times. So theoretically, this PKT transition has been understood very well uh, by uh, Kostaric RG4. I think this is still uh, one of the most remarkable applications of uh, renormalization group. So uh, there are uh, two almost marginal coupling. Uh, one is uh, spin wave stiffness, and the other is vortex fugacity. So at least you need to uh, track RG flow in this two dimensional parameter space. And uh, especially the BKT transition, uh, exactly at the transition, uh, the RG flow uh, follows this straight line towards this origin. Um, so, in fact, uh, the, the transition can be understood as a microscopic model is somewhere around here, maybe away from the uh, fixed point. But if you change the temperature of 2D XI model, then in the low temperature phase, you start from slightly below the uh, transition line. Then you end up with this critical line, which is C equals to one conformal field theory. And uh, above TC, you follow almost follow this straight line, but eventually you uh, um, your trajectory um, comes away from this uh, uh, separate tricks and uh, goes to uh, infinite temperature disordered fixed point. So this RG flow explains uh, basic feature of BKT transition. And uh, along this separate tricks, um, so the transition line is given by uh, YV equals to YK equals the, some coupling G. And uh, uh, on this line, the RG equation is written like this. So this is marginally irrelevant. So if you solve this, then this uh, marginal coupling scales like uh, one over small L, which is one over low L. So this uh, marginal coupling uh, decays in a large system size, but uh, very slowly. So this is a source of the logarithmic correction and uh, also source of the difficulty of the numerical uh, simulation. Okay, so, so these, these are very basic. But then uh, uh, over many years, uh, uh, actually very useful technique has been developed mostly in 1D quantum system. So, uh, so I have introduced 2D classical spin model, but uh, of course uh, you can consider corresponding 1D quantum system. And you can also observe BKT transition in uh, quantum system, 1D quantum system. And uh, a typical example is this spin one half XXD chain. And uh, for delta less than one, you are in the latin liquid phase, gap race. And uh, above delta equals to one, you enter gapped phase. Uh, so there is a BKT transition at delta equals one. And actually it's not coincidence that uh, uh, delta equals one BKT transition point in this model is SU2 symmetric. So actually the low energy effective theory for BKT transition can be written like this. Uh, you have uh, level one SU2 versus you know, Witten theory. Then perturbation can be written, marginal perturbations can be written in terms of SU2 currents. 
And uh, on the transition line, you uh, don't have this anisotropic uh, perturbation and uh, just have SU2 symmetric perturbation. Um, that means that uh, when you uh, cross BKT transition, when you are exactly at a BKT transition, at least in this effective model, uh, you should have SU2 symmetry. Then uh, uh, in engineer's paper um, in 1994, uh, Okamoto and Nomura proposed that uh, you can use finite size spectrum of 1D quantum system to identify the critical point of BKT transition very precisely. So as you know, uh, in CFT, there is a state operator correspondence. So in pure CFT, uh, excited, uh, uh, excitation energy in finite size system is related to the scaling dimension of the primary field like this. And uh, if you have perturbation, there are correct corrections, but uh, there is a, a correspondence between uh, uh, primary field and scaling dimension and uh, excitation energy. So as I said, uh, at the BKT transition, the effective theory acquires uh, SU2 symmetry. Then uh, finite size energy levels should also reflect this SU2 symmetry. So all the eigenstates should be classified in terms of uh, representation of SU2. So using this uh, fact, you can identify the uh, BKT transition point from uh, energy spectrum of rather small size which you can do with uh, exact dynamization of small uh, 1D chain Hamiltonian. Okay, so, so the situation was uh, rather uh, uh, nice for spin one half XXD chain. But uh, if you want to apply this to uh, classical XI model in 2D, which is my interest, uh, actually the situation is somewhat different. Uh, that is because uh, in spin one half chain, the single vortex creation operator is forbidden by translation symmetry, which is related to deep shoot matrix theorem or you know mixed anomaly if you like. Um, so the lowest um, uh, leading operator uh, allowed by symmetry in the Hamiltonian or Lagrangian is this uh, cosine of four phi which corresponds to double vortex creation operator. But uh, in the classical XI model or uh, its counterpart in 1D quantum system, uh, there is no uh, um, selection rule to forbid a single vortex creation operator. So you do have single vortex creation operator. So in case of uh, classical XY, to the uh, spin model, the BKT transition is driven by single vortex operator. In uh, Latin Jarikit theory, you can write this as cosine of two phi. So they are different. So actually, the Latin parameter is different. So here uh, you have uh, k cos one half, which corresponds to SU two versus mu ten at level one. But in classical XY, the transition point corresponds to k cos two. So they are different theory with different operator content. But once you write down the effective Lagrangian, uh, you can just uh, map from this side to this side by replacing two phi with phi and uh, theta, dual of his theta by two theta. Sorry, you have two yeah. minutes to wrap up. Oh, wow, okay. Sorry, yeah, sorry, I miscalculated. Oh. So then uh, the idea is that uh, you can, uh, uh, also find a triplet, which becomes degenerate at BKT transition point. So, um, but uh, uh, this level sp spectroscopy has been applied to 1D quantum system, but not so much for 2D statmix system, uh, because uh, in principle, you can study transform matrix, but uh, usually transform matrix is still too large to be diagnosed. Then uh, here we use tensor network realization. So you can uh, represent Boltzmann weight by tensor network, then apply this tensor network renormalization procedure. Then uh, each step, the system size is multiplied by square root two. So after doing certain steps, then single tensor represent uh, L by L uh, square uh, of spins. 
then by diagonalizing, uh, by contracting horizontal indices and uh, diagonalizing uh, remaining matrix, uh, you can extract the uh, energy level of corresponding uh, 1D quantum system. Then uh, you can uh, find the uh, uh, point where the energy levels become degenerate. And uh, this point corresponds to BKT transition because uh, at this point you recover SU2 symmetry. And uh, this procedure eliminates logarithmic correction to all orders in major coupling G. So uh, you can study just uh, 4, 8, 16, 32 sites uh, broke and obtain the transfer matrix spectrum. Then uh, uh, there is still weak L dependence because of the irrelevant perturbations of uh, scaling dimension four. So the correction is basically uh, one over L square. So it's much weaker than uh, log correction and uh, you can extrapolate to L infinity. And then uh, still remains is a finite bond dimension effect. And the basically finite bond dimension, which is necessary in practical calculation, introduces a finite correlation length. So very roughly speaking, if uh, your block size L is smaller than this correlation length, then low energy spectrum is almost exact. So even beyond that, low energy spectrum is still reasonably accurate, but uh, there is some error. So um, by changing the bond dimension, uh, actually, this is D equals to bond dimension 48, which uh, shows uh, almost con convergence because the correlation length here is about 50, which is larger than 32. So this is almost enough for our purpose. And the 28, there is some error because the correlation length is 26 and smaller than uh, 32 we are dealing with. But, um, I want to emphasize that uh, this error caused by finite bond dimension is order of 10 to minus four, so which is actually comparable to uh, errors in the best available uh, estimates that we That would be great if we wrap yeah. it up. Yeah, okay, so, yeah. uh, so this is a final result. Uh, I think we can get uh, one digit more with not so much uh, computational cost. And also, we can uh, track the RG4, VRISE, RG4. Okay, sorry for my time. Uh, thanks for your attention. All right, thank you. Um, so maybe we can move on to the next speaker.